sweet Royal Hour Club and Lavi Seafrey. And now, direct from the United States of America, at enormous expense, we present with great pride, yet again, great humility, the astonishing talents of the amazing, the incredible, the astounding, the very great and sexy Les Dawson. I want you to feel alone. <laughs> you see, we've had this bijou problemette. We simply cannot give these tickets away for your show. The people will not have them. Oh, don't talk rubbish. Oh, but it's true. It's terrible, but it's true. I'm Mr. very Dawson. big and grumpy. And... Oh, no, no, no. You see, the trouble is, Miss Dawson, there's a seven-year waiting list for tickets for stars on Sunday. Well, there's a five-month waiting list for tickets for Emmerdale Farm. Oh, come on. They don't have an audience on Emmerdale Farm. Oh, yes, they do but they asked them to keep quiet. Now, this is ridiculous. For two things, I'd hit you, but I don't like mascara on my knuckles. Now, you look here. I'm big in this town. When I played the Lees Grand, it was standing room every night. Oh, yes, well, they had to sell the seats to cover the losses. Well, just don't give me those tickets. I'll get rid of them, you buffoon. <laughs> You've not heard the last of this, mark my words. You treat people better than this on Cat Weasel. I'll always remember the old adage. When one door shuts, another one opens. And it's worth knowing. Peasant, a fool. So they can't give the tickets away, eh? She's flaming ridiculous. Now, my husband, before there was there was one. Got a new image? I make Gary glitter like a damp battery. <laughs> Show him. Don't you worry, I'll I'll get rid of that producer for a start. He's an idiot. He went for a brain operation the other week. They only charged him tuppence. That included search fees. <laughs> what am I worried about? I don't have to do this for a living, thank God. I can always fall back on the wife. She looks like a trampoline. I'm only doing it for the luxuries in life, bread and shoes. Hello, sir. Would you like a ticket for says Les? <laughs> and you! Fools. I've lost 16 jobs through illness. They all got sick of me. I should have took that job with the Eagle Laundries as a foreman. The only trouble is that the wants to wash an eagle. Ah, oh, there's a fella. Do I would like a ticket for says Les? Excuse me, sir. Would you like a ticket for says Les? What's the matter with you? It's no worse than news at ten. I don't understand people. What's coming over everybody? They... They're too blase. The trouble is, there's no romance in this world anymore, but there is if you care to look for it. Take, take anywhere, take that garage over there.
to nature's world. Well, here I am, as you can see, in a heavily wooded thicket in Neesden, where I've been studying under somewhat hazardous conditions, malaria and so forth, the matings and the various life habits and patterns of the stork. As you all know, the stork, a much maligned creature, often depicted as bringing babies. <laughs> this, of course, is a miss of her. But having watched at somewhat close proximity in my hide to the various habits of the stork, I can well understand why that creature <laughs> has been depicted as bringing babies. <laughs> we all know where babies come from, don't we? We're not children anymore. But that stork does it on one leg. <laughs> if it had two legs, Bum bum! You'd be up to here in bloody stock! <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, fair Britain. Karate is a form of self-defense used by Shinto and Buddhist priests. It utilizes the fact that you don't carry weapons but use any part of your body as an act of aggression self-defense. You are in virtually, in fact, a human clove. Tonight, I'd like to demonstrate the art of karate by showing you an exhibition which will be undertaken by my very good protege, the great Roberto, who is, in fact, a human assegai. Spent many years in Nippon perfecting his art. He is now going to break this plank in half with his cranium, skull, head. This piece of wood is specially seasoned. It was plucked from the bulwarks of the bounty. The hardest would not a man. In your own time, Roberto, break that goddamn plan. Concussion. <laughs> 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 Forgive me if I don't appear my usual effervescent self, but I haven't been feeling too well. In fact, a year ago, my, my ears began to ring. <laughs> and every time I answered it, it was the wrong number. <laughs> I went to a psychiatrist and he cured me. He said, just simply reverse the charge. <laughs> Up till then, I'd always regarded psychiatry as a sort of crank branch of the profession of medicine. But when I went to him, I was so impressed. I walked into, the, into his, 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 uh, his surgery. I stood there, and he said, good morning, what seems to be the matter? I said, well, nobody listens to what I'm saying. He said, good morning, what seems to be the matter? <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a great regard for psychiatry. Come in. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> do sit down. <laughs> Uh, what seems to be the problem? Well, it's very difficult to know where to start, Doctor. You may find it all rather peculiar. But the point is, I, I keep thinking I'm Vera Lynn. I know it sounds silly, but... Oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Uh, when did all this start? It would be about three weeks ago to the very day, Doctor. I was in one of those alfresco tea rooms in Harpenden. I'd had a pot roast and a meringue and a maid of honour. I was on my third plate of prunes when I got this sudden urge to get up and go and stand in the spotlight and sing. We'll meet again Don't know where Don't know when But I know we'll meet again Some sunny day Just like you always do <laughs> Till the dark clouds roll the blue skies near the two Oh, wonderful, beautiful, oh, oh, Miss Lynn, I've always been a fan of yours. Can I have your watch, please? I'm not Vera Lynn. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I recognise those golden tones on the Vera Lynn, isn't it? Could you sign this record slate for me, Miss Lynn? One of the boys from Benghazi. I'll never wash my sleeve again. Roll the hun back. Wait a minute, this is ridiculous. I'm not Vera Lynn. Of course you are. I'm not. Of course you are. I'm not. You are, or my name's not Tom Jones. No, you're not Tom Jones. <laughs> 
There have been many great meetings in life. Churchill, Stalin and Roosevelt. Marx and Spencer. <laughs> Bill and Ben. But who can match that peerless moment in history when Stanley stumbled across Livingston?
Eastern, I presume. Yes. Uh, are you... Are you Stanley? Yes. <laughs> hey! You never mentioned that at the office! Come on! Come on! I woke up this morning in the sun didn't shine. I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine. I loaded 16 turns of that number nine coal. And the foreman said, What the hell are you doing here? You're on night shift this week. <laughs> unheralded amongst the shires of old Yorkshire, we found some archives in Ripon concerning a man who gave so much to the heritage of music in this country, Mervyn Pith. <laughs> some say he took the pith out of reality. <laughs> Mervyn Pith was a dwarf from Scarborough <laughs> who used to blow omelettes through his wife <laughs> He married an organist in a striped picket at Dagenham, and they settled down to married bliss in Morley. His life was not an easy one. He suffered from quite an incredible self-consciousness. In fact, when he died, his coach followed the mourners. <laughs> in remembering him, I think it's best to illustrate his virtuosity by playing a little-known piece of his, which he wrote as he they actually dying at the Glossop Fish Festival <laughs> in aid of funds for the Source Works Band, which at that time was playing in the Orkneys. And I think this illustrates his true genius with notation. Pieces, I say, wrote as he lay dying. Thank you. <laughs> Then he died. <laughs> Dr. Livingston, I presume? You must be joking. And to think I shot the rapids for this. A man whose name is often mistaken for that of an orangutan spleen disorder, Labby Sifri. <laughs> from my book and see you sleeping sleeping on the sofa wearing my pullover walking down the street on little feet I could almost eat you lucky me to meet you wouldn't it be sad if I hadn't met you at all I am more than glad that you found me Put your arms around me now. After all this time, I still adore you. Need you more than ever. Love you till forever. Ha da 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 da. Ha da 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 da. Friendship amongst men is the finest bond of steel throughout history. You'll always find that men are friendlier to each other and will cover up for each other more than women will. I have a friend who 
Said something only the other night on the telephone. They said, Les, we've known each other for years. I would go across the Kalahari Desert without water for you. I would leap the Andes with a handful of grit in my fist for you. <laughs> I would brave the frozen tundra of Mackenzie Sound in the teeth of a blizzard for you. I'll come over for you tonight if it's not raining. <laughs> But men will do this for each other, particularly, we ally each other, particularly when there's a woman involved. We'll always cover up for each other when the wife's involved. Well, nice to see you again, George. <laughs> excuse me, please, excuse me, thank you. Here, Sam, Sam. Hello, Bert. The wife will be here in a minute. She's just into the ladies. What do you want me to do? Well, look, I was with you last night, OK? Oh, no, you were. Yes, look. We were both round at Harry's place, right? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, sure up, she's here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Sam. Hello, Doris. Your usual, sir? I'll have a pint. Yeah. Your usual, Doris? Yes, please. Two pints, please. Uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just telling uh, Doris what a good night we had last night at Harry's. Good night what was what we had? Was what we had was good night. Was what we, we had. We had a good night at Harry's. Harry Carter's? Yes. No, not Harry Carter's. No. Which Harry was it, then? Hey? Harry, who? Oh, the big fella. No, I didn't oh, know him. In the Battle of Britain, he was in the cavalry, had a long lance. Big, big, big. Oh, he's like, whoa, whoa, big, 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 big six foot beard. Oh, Walks with one leg in front of the other. You've seen him. Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Harry Bradshaw. Oh. And where does he live then? Hey? Where does he live? Who? Harry Bradshaw. Harry Bradshaw. A Bristol! A Bristol! <laughs> oh, Chester! Chester! <laughs> oh, Manchester! Manchester! <laughs> Chesterfield? <laughs> Titfield? <laughs> oh, hold him! Hold him! Who? Howdy Bradshaw, what's his job? Oh! Oh! Makes windscreen wipers! <laughs> Windy cleaner! He moves the car with one other! <laughs> oh! He's a window cleaner in a mobile toilet! <laughs> hold very tight, please! What? Uh, I was just telling that lady over there, love, to uh, hold very tight, please, because She's only got room for one more. <laughs> bus conductor, correct! What? Harry Bradshaw, very correct bus conductor. 35 years, never had an endorsement. And why did you have to spend the whole night with his very correct bus conductor in Bristol? Chesterfield. Titfield. All right. That's the job. Harry Pete, why did you have to spend the whole night there? Ah, now then. Now there's... Well, who? The lawnmower, not lawnmower. <laughs> the bus? The bus, the bus, not the bus, no, not the bus, the car, the car was going through Broadbottom. <laughs> bum, 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 no, no, not bum, bum, ball, 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 bum, ball, bottom, ball, bottom, car, ball, bottom, <laughs> ball, ball, the ball cock, the ball cock. There was a big, 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 big chicken. <laughs> Pigeon, <laughs> House Martin, <laughs> Emu, <laughs> Ostrich, <laughs> Hen, Hen, Big Hen, Big, Big Hen, Big Hen, Big Hen, Big Hen, Big Hen! I've never heard such a cock and bull story in all my life. Just wait till I Doris, get I mean... you home. I know who you were with all night. It was that Tosharette. I couldn't stand any of that, no. I'm going, John. Yes, sir. Hey, Sam. Mm -hmm. Sam, I'm looking See, for my Sam. missus. Uh, she hasn't been here again, has she? Your missus? Hi. No. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 <laughs> Nose. Nosley Park. Safari. Shaving balloons. Shaving no. balloons. Big German come up. Ba bum. Came up the big ball cock. Well on that. <laughs> <laughs> Les. 
Last week, Sid Lawrence and the orchestra appeared at the annual hot pot supper at the Bisley Rifle Club. <laughs> After their concert, they were Sid Lawrence in particular was presented with six silver bullets inscribed. We don't know what's written on them because they haven't been dug out of his chest yet. <laughs> but there they are to prove that rubbish can make money. Sir Lawrence! <laughs> That. Poor devil, he's been five years now on the rape squad. <laughs> oh, hello, Ada. Hello, sister. See, uh, do you look upset? Well, I have to sit down. I'm getting a hot flush. Ooh. <laughs> Let me take a bath. Oh, <laughs> you kind of sin itself. Look, I've been having my migraine attacks oh. again. <laughs> I went to the cemetery the other day to put some flowers on Bert's grave, you know, my first oh, yes, husband. Bert. Not on his side, though, you know. I went to put some flowers on the grave, and I couldn't find where I'm buried. <laughs> I did. Oh, well, you can imagine how I felt. You were there, you saw him go down. Go down and nearly followed him. He was all gone. Pulled me back with the first sod fell on the coffin lid. <laughs> oh, I 
I'll never forget that selfie God I won't. Anyway, I, I went, couldn't find the grave anywhere. So I just slumped on a stool. Hey, you I had a peppermint, you know, I get some oh, of my little yeah. bellies. I just sat there and the birds you came up. Nice fellow, oh, you know, yes. nice fellow. You remember him, Tommy, yes, little yeah. Tommy, Tommy yes. Beamish. Wooden remember? leg. That's the fellow with the wooden leg. <laughs> Lost the decrease. <laughs> well, he came over and said, what is what's the matter with you, Aidan? Oh, come on. I've got to control those together, Aidan. I said, I can't find his grave. I tried his grave. Went into the office and he looked through his ledger. Could have been lots of new ones, you know, but I didn't know that's gone. We looked high and low in that register for his grave and we couldn't find it. Oh, wait. I said, I saw him go down. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what was the name again? I said, Collins. He looked through the list and he said, we've no Mr. Collins to bury me. Never. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I kept going this way and that way, flushes, <laughs> flushes like you. <laughs> he said, but well, then he said, look to. He said, but we've got a Mrs. Collins and Benedict. I said, that's him, everything was in my name. <laughs> In the castle yard <laughs> We know what it is And who did it <laughs> But for God's sake Tell us where it is <laughs> In programme for schools today, we're going to discuss ecology. What am I doing now? <laughs> yes, I'm breathing. I am breathing fresh air. We take it for granted, don't we? But fresh air these days, thanks to pollution, is at a premium. It's a well-known scientific fact because of this need for increased oxygen content, our lungs are getting bigger. Chests are bigger. Even in young ladies, there is a <laughs> tremendous development of the chests and breasts. <laughs> next door, Rowena. She's 15. Where do you want to see her? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>